Welcome, O Ramadan. Radio Sultanate of the Oman 90.4 and the Sultan Kabu Center for Islamic Culture presents. Presents. Reaching out through dialogue. Reaching out through dialogue. Listen. Listen. And get involved. Get involved. It is a great experience for you personally. It would really create a balance on each and every one of us in this holy month of Ramadan. Reaching out through dialogue. Presented by Hatim Harif Al Abdusalam. Directed by Matloub Ayal Al Wahabi. Reaching out through dialogue. A special in this holy month of Ramadan. Here on ninety point four FM. Assalamu alaikum, dear listeners. Welcome to our program, Reaching Out Through Dialogue. I'm your host, Hatim al Salam. Our topic today is human brotherhood in Islam. Please join me in welcoming my distinguished guest, Sheikh Saeed al Mafraji. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. How Thank are you well. today? Oh, very well. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to have you on the program. I'm very pleased as well. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, we normally come across the term brotherhood and we tend to get a bit confused of this term as oh. this term sometimes is used by gangs and small groups which do not represent the true meaning of this concept. So today, inshallah, we are going to go through this term or concept in the Islamic perspective. Sheikh, can Muslims claim brotherhood among themselves? Certainly, they can do so. And uh, this is uh, referred in the Quran and also in the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Starting with the Quran, we read in Surah Al-Hujurat, or in a chapter of Al-Hujurat, the rooms. Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ ikhwa." Certainly, the believers are brothers. And uh, from the tradition of the Prophet, the Prophet said, المؤمن أَخُ المؤمن. A believer is a brother of a believer. Mm. So there is a brotherhood in Islam. Mm. And on top of that, in the Quran also, as Allah asks us to bind ourselves together in a solid bond by saying, وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا And come together in the rope of Allah together. Mm. So this is a brotherhood, bondage, fraternity, which is supposed to prevail. Now we normally come across many followers of different, of different sects in Islam. Are they all still brothers? As long as they all share the same Quran, mm-hmm. And majority of the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they are all Muslims. Mm. Because the same Quran is asking them to bind one another. Mm. So yes, uh, by referring to sects like Hanbal, Hanafi, Shafi, uh, Shia, Ibadi, and other sects, they are all considered Muslims. Mm. And they are all sharing the brotherhood as well. Could you please tell us uh, more about how significant human brotherhood is in Islam? Yes, it's very significant. In fact, it is linked with faith. A faith of a person is not complete if he doesn't have that brotherhood mm. of love to others. Uh, the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. Mm. No one among you will have a true belief or will not be a believer unless and until he loves for others what he loves for himself. Okay. So, yes, the significance is actually within faith itself. So we became really true faithful people or believers if we actually help ourselves and we show this brotherhood and sincerity. <clears throat> In fact, Muslims have got the rights. Mm. Some scholars there say there are five rights, some say seven, some list even longer than that list. So if any help that a Muslim wants, you should provide by definition of Islam. So the significance is actually in the, is, is making a very social community and a very comfortable environment to, for each and everybody and remove the hardship. So it's very significant. Mm. If a family member is not a Muslim, does that mean his blood relation would be affected? Brotherhood in faith becomes stronger if your blood relation is also Islamic. Mm. You have a family which is of all Muslims. That's the strongest brotherhood you can have. However, Mm -hmm. we see in the Quran and the tradition of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that there are cases where a Muslim family Mm. was divided. Okay. You see a father, a non-believer, and a son is a prophet, like Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Yeah, he Mm. was addressing his father by saying, Ya Abati, oh my father, don't don't disbelieve, don't worship idols, don't go against the the instruction of God, 
Don't do that. Oh, my father. Oh, my father. So he was very polite, was very with, polite with his nicely father. nicely calling mm. to him because the Quran is asking for that. Ud'u ila sabil rabbika bil hikmati wal mawa'idati al hasana wa jadilhum bil lati hiya ahsan. Call in the path of your God bil hikma with wisdom wal mawa'idati al hasan and good words. Okay. And also talk to them or argue with them in a nice way. So whoever is, you cannot be better than anybody. Mm. Everybody is very important to you, whether it's a believer or unbeliever. So you have to show that harmony, the passion, the passion mm. friendliness, and also a brotherly manner to call. But when it comes to your family, it becomes even, even, more. even more. Yes, mm. because uh, there is a blood link which mm. makes even more important. So here we see Nabi Ibrahim uh, calling his father in a very nice way. He still remained his father. Mm. And in fact, in that, so, that wouldn't change. This fact would wouldn't change. change. Mm. And then we see Nabi Noah, Prophet Noah, mm. peace be upon him, peace be upon living him. with his wife, mm -hmm. who actually chose to betray him in faith. Okay. So she did not believe in what he was passing as a message, but still she remained as a wife. Same thing happened to Nabi Lot, Lot Prophet mm. Lot. He stayed with his wife mm. to the last minute, but she was still unbeliever. But the relation was still considered between a man and a wife. Okay. Thank you for elaborating uh, this point, uh, Sheikh. Now, are there any benefits in this human uh, brotherhood? And if so, please state some examples. There are a lot of benefits. Uh, evidences are from the Quran, and uh, we see them also in the tradition of the Prophet, many of them. Mm. The benefits, actually, if you want to sum up, that is to provide a society and a community which is harmony in harmonized community mm. social and uh, beneficial no hardship in it and everybody is provided with what she or, or he wants okay in a very nice way and uh, not to complicate life mm. so in any other is, is a very sociable society will end up as a result of this brotherhood fraternity in islam now let's talk about non-muslims how much care does this brotherhood provide to non-Muslims? Yeah, indeed. Uh, as I said in the verse which I, I read previously, that Ud'u ila sabil rabbika bil hikmati wal mawa'idati al hasan wa jadirum bil ladihi ahsan Call upon the path of your God with wisdom and also in good manners. And by bringing somebody from, let's say, pagan, as a pagan, mm. and bringing the fold of Islam, you have actually rescued that person. Mm. And you have provided him the best of life because he will live on earth in a very best way by following the instruction of his creator. So that's the greatest uh, uh, achievement a non-Muslim can get out of this brotherly or brotherhood provision. And by actually living with them together, providing what they need, because if you look at the, the, the life of the Prophet, uh, peace, be upon, peace be upon him, mm. he lived with non-Muslim together and he could provide what they needed. Mm. Yeah, They had to obey some rules, but they benefited and they shared all the benefits of Muslims in that society. The, the Christians, the Jews, the pagans, the, the atheists, they could stay together in the same society and they could benefit from the peace. For example, enemy, any enemy coming to, to attack that society, the Muslim will be in the forefront to protect everybody. And as I said, more important than that is actually to remove the person from the life of idolism into the life of worshipping one creator who created the universe mm. and the person himself and the sustainer of the universe. So this is a major benefit. I mean, is an obligation of all Muslims to get out of their places and try to inform others and invite them nicely. Mm. Uh, even th those ru rude people like Pharaoh, mm. God commanded bo two prophets, which is Moses and uh, uh, Aaron, Harun, Musa, Musa or Harun, to go to him and to speak to him. Okay. Talk to him in a very soft way, way mm. so that Allahu or yakhsha, so that he may remember and be. Come, I mean, his heart will be brought back to to to, to the right way. Okay. So this is 
the right of non-Muslim from the Muslims. Mm. It's not something the Muslim can do, they mm -hmm. should do. So these are the rights. And you can see later on maybe what are the examples which actually happened to the non-Muslim from the, the society time. of okay. Muslims. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that brotherhood is based on, on love and is linked to, uh, to faith. Can you elaborate more, please, uh, on yes, this point? Yes, uh, th this comes from la yu'minu ahadakum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nasi. No one will be considered a true believer unless and until he loves for himself or for herself what he, live, he loves for the others. Mm. So there is a link of, of faith and the link of, uh, of, of, of actually uh, this love which goes out of the, of the person. And uh, we could see that Sayyidina Ali, uh, one of the very respectful uh, companions of the Prophet. And he was, he was also he, later he was, on the fourth caliph. He was the fourth caliph after that. Mm. Uh, he, he was brought in front of a judge. Mm. And just because he was addressed in a better manner and uh, the, the person who was against him was not addressed in a, in a nice way. For example, he was called Ya Abel Hassan or the father of Hassan, which is a nice way to be called. Mm. And the other person who was a Jew was just called by his name. Although they were in conflict, mm. but he corrected the judge by saying, don't give me a better status than my opponent. opponent. Mm. Although we are opponents here mm. in, the, in the court, but that's loving even for a non-Muslim, what you should love yourself to have, and it, it, it's an inequality and uh, and exactly. uh, is this being, a being justice, the same a justice and equality, and mm. also uh, a good wish for others, regardless whether they are, they are, they are Muslim or non-Muslim. In this case, um, now let us go back to the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, is there any evidence that the Prophet, peace be upon him, showed? love and care to non-Muslims. Oh, there are plenty of uh, evidences of the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, showing love to many, uh, to, to many people. Uh, for example, we see that there was a young Jew who was about to die. Mm. And the Prophet heard about this. He was not a Muslim, of course. Mm. He heard and he rushed to that place to visit that. And that stayed, sick boy. That sick boy, just mm. to go and see, sit beside, uh, softly speaking to him and to his father. Father was there. And then eventually he used the opportunity to ask him to join Islam as well. Mm. As an option. Mm. It wasn't imposed. There's no compulsion in Islam. Mm. Then the father signaled to his son that, okay, you can accept this. So he, he, he became a Muslim. And the prophet was so happy, so happy leaving that place saying, I thank God who saved this soul from mm. entering the hellfire. So this shows a practical evidence that Islam actually cares for non-Muslims, very much so. In Oman, for example, if you take the flood which happened in, in, in 2007 in Oman, mm. the worst flood ever, we saw ourselves, Muslims, leaving their homes, car, their homes and going to help non-Muslims, taking them from the flood area and to the cars, using Re their risking own cars, their own life, rescuing them and risking their own life to rescue non-Muslims mm. and also to provide food and water. Yeah. So this is actually is a universal kindness and mercy, which is supposed because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mm. was sent down by God as a mercy for the entire mankind. Mm. As a mercy, we have not sent you except the mercy to the entire mankind. Are there any ex other examples uh, of um, the love of the Prophet? Yes. Yes. He was helping. He would help people who will care. For there was one lady who was not a Muslim. In fact, she was against the Prophet, mm. and he saw her carrying a heavy load. Mm. And he went to her, asking her, "Oh, my aunt, can I carry that instead of you?" Mm. Then she gave it to him. She was so happy to relieve, to be relieved with that heavy load, mm. to the extent that when he reached the place where he, she wanted him to reach. She gave him something as a warning, which was actually a very strange warning, mm. telling him that. I, I don't have to give. I don't have anything to give you as a thing. But I just warn you: don't listen to somebody who's called Muhammad, uh, okay. <laughs> who's the same himself who helped her. So he asked her, "Oh my aunt, do you know who Muhammad is?" Mm. She said, "I don't know." He said, "I'm Muhammad." And when she heard that, she was so, I mean, touched in her heart, and she actually automatically embraced Islam. In that. Okay. So you can see, a help from Muslim is to everybody. Sheikh will be right back after the break. Welcome back, Sheikh Said. Now, uh, let us continue with uh, more examples uh, from the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, about his love and care to the to non-Muslims. Yes, uh, as I said, uh, the Quran, we read in the Quran, Allah says, أعوذ بالله من الرجيم, وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. We have not sent you except as a mercy for the entire creation. 
not even mankind alone creation mm. means humans genes animals insects plants the dead everything the whole entire creation mm. because the word alamin in arabic means the entire creation mm. so being a mercy for the entire creation he was so merciful and he the, the, the companions also learned from him to be merciful as well in fact we are all supposed to be the same mm. now other examples of the, the the time of the prophet he was going to address the people of taif about 75 miles or kilometers from makkah in a hilly mountain uh, area uh, when he reached there the unbelievers they used their children and uh, those uh, crazy people to stone the prophet until he bled to his feet mm. just showing that they rejected him and they rejected the faith they didn't even give him the opportunity to to, to, to speak to the leaders to explain exactly so they, he, they just gave the orders to to their to their children and the the crazy people in that town to to stone the prophet muhammad exactly exactly mm. so there was no even opportunity to speak mm. so, and he bled to his feet and he was so disappointed okay to the extent that god sent down angels who could actually move the mountains around taif and destroy that village okay the people and he was given that opportunity he was told just give us an order we have been sent by god to destroy this if you so wish okay he said no i pray to god that the offspring of these people would be believers, would be believers and mm. embrace islam be muslims and that actually even to the angels themselves it shows a mercy mm. which is normally is not available from ordinary people so you can see here those are not only unbelievers they are enemies on top of that they and actually hurt him and stopped the mission of god and it was i think the the, the, the worst point of uh, uh, of uh, the life of prophet muhammad when he was really disappointed and exactly. hurt and uh, was alone Yes, and he so, needed support and uh, it was easy for him just to give the order and exactly uh, destroy in that the... desperate situation uh, and uh, seeing that those angels were sent by god to him to do whatever he wanted it could have been easy if it was an ordinary person but out of the mercy which god get implanted in his heart he just said no uh, may god uh, give these people offsprings who will be believers and indeed mm. we know that from taif there are a lot of believers who came after that another example is that when he went with thousands of companions and opened up makkah mm. conquered makkah this is towards the last uh, times of his life uh, and uh, makkah became under the the power, oh, the of, power of islam mm. now in the, the meccans who actually for years yeah for, since he started the mission of islam they started they became enemies and they destroyed they killed in fact companions they took uh, properties of the companions in fact prophet prophet himself was taken in makkah the house and other properties so he comes now in makkah with upper hand and power and actually it is said that he came with more than uh, 12000 uh, uh, no more than um, Yes more 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 than that is in 120000 120000 sorry. yes uh, about mm. uh and they're all there dominating the city of Mecca and uh, overpowering everybody now he could have done whatever he wanted to revenge for example mm. especially to those who killed his uh, companions and destroyed properties and uh, chased them out and chased Mecca. him out mm. himself mm. from his own domicile place but out of the mercy which is planted uh, by god to in his heart he just say when they ask him what are you, he, he asked him what do you think i'm going to do with you with you mm. they say ah uh, you are a, a nice a kind brother and the son of a kind brother he said go you are fr you are free free people i'm not going to do anything bad to you so that was a massive mercy to the entire society which was enemy to him and the company so he excused them excused and he gave them, and them said, the, the, and, the choice and, and, whether to choose islam or exactly of course uh, uh, choice mm. of islam is always an optional there's no mm. compulsion in islam so many of them of course embraced islam after that mm -hmm. seeing that this is really a, a very is a divine divine mission it's not just a, a kingdom which okay. is uh, the, the initial thought Another example is the one who wanted to kill the prophet when the prophet had already migrated to Medina still he, they were they were trying to kill him 
Mm. And there are two people who sat besides, and one of them told the other, look after my family if I'm killed, and I'm going to kill the prophet. And they agreed on that. And the other person was willing to spend money to look after his family if he's killed by going to attempt to kill the prophet in Medina. So, so, so two, two men from the people of Mecca, the disbelievers of Mecca, yes. agreed upon one of them would go to Medina and kill and assassinate uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes. And uh, in case he's he's been killed by by other Muslims, uh, the other person in Mecca would take care of his family. Exactly. Okay. Now, when this person, a murderer, uh, when reached to Medina, he met companions, and companions could see from his face he came with a bad intention. Mm. And. Uh, it didn't. It didn't take long to 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 realize that he came to kill the prophet. Mm. And uh, when he was asked, he had to admit at one time that yes, I've come to kill the prophet. And the prophet was was brought. You know what happened? Instead of prophet saying, "Bring him and chain him," he said, "Have you given him something to drink?" That was the first question from the prophet, mm. knowing that he came to assassinate him. But the question came, and Sahabas were astonished. The companions were. were yes, the companions said they could not understand. Yes, how can we? treat this person kindly he's an assassin or a potential assassin mm. and then the prophet ordered milk from his own house to give this person look at that kind of mercy and then on top of that he said don't harm him just tie him in a pillar in the mosque in the masjid the masjid of the prophet here so that he can learn he can see what islam is how people pray what they how do they actually socialize themselves how do they help each other what are the social systems in Islam, he can appreciate mm. that this this religion. So he could observe. He can observe, um, yeah. Mm. And he was given enough time, mm. and food was being brought to him while he's sitting there. Mm. Food will be brought there, and he so he was be, not tortured or no, 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 no. Beaten he was just anything. kept there, not to move. Mm. But when food came, he was had a total freedom to eat, to drink, and nice food was being brought regularly. Mm. And he could only observe. He was not obliged to anything. Uh, and once once the time has reached, which Prophet went up, it's about three days, mm. he was asked, would you like to, to embrace Islam or what is your choice? Mm. He said, no. And Prophet said, release him and free him. Let him go. Let back. him go mm. on his own. So he left a little bit just to the suburbs and then he came back himself. Mm. He said, now I want to declare Islam. And he pronounced the Shahada and he became a Muslim. Mm. And when he was asked, why didn't you do this before? Why didn't you accept it the first time yes, when you offered? Asked, he said, I didn't want to be seen that I'm doing this out of fear or out of compulsion or anything. I wanted to do it from my own will. So that's why I came back myself. Now, an, a potential assassin translated into a Muslim just out of this merciful religion and the, the, the mess of the prophet that's an amazing story absolutely a jewish cof a jew coffin mm. a coffin was passing we'll talk about this very quickly mm. and then the prophet seeing a coffin passing by he stood up and respected that coffin that coffin whoever was in the coffin mm. and he was told he's a jew who is inside he said why why are you standing up why uh, are you standing in up? respect i, I respect mm. uh, unfortunately is a soul which has departed uh, without me helping Mm. Uh, but I still respect. That's another indication. And the revenge he wanted to make out of uh, those to, to those who killed his uncle Hamza. Mm. Uh, that was where, in which battle? This uh, is in the battle of Uhud mm. when Hamza was killed mm. or martyred, and then he was so angry because they actually took some of his organs mm. out of his body, which was a bad torture of of, of a dead person. Mm. Uh, so he said, "I'm going to revenge very fiercely." And the Quran says, just revenge exactly what has been done. And if you forgive, even better for you. So the Prophet chose to forgive. He forgave. Although it's Although very difficult. In fact, uh, in the Quran itself, mm, mm. In, in the Quran, he was told he can revenge. But he, if he chooses to, to forgive, is better than he chose to forgive. To forgive. Yeah. Hey, although it's emotionally, it's very difficult very, if very, someone uh, kills a relative of yours who is uh, very dear to your heart, and yes. then you just choose to forgive. Indeed. And... Uh, just uh, carry on. Remember, he had life. two choices mm. to revenge, as it as exactly the same, or to forgive, and he chose to forgive. Sheikh, we'll be right back after the break. Yeah. Welcome back, Sheikh. Thank you, uh, Sheikh. What are the aspirations or plans of the Human Brotherhood in Islam? The objectives and aspirations of the Islamic Brotherhood is actually to extend this Brotherhood mm. to the rest of the world, to the non-Muslims, mm. by inviting them in a very nice and wise way. Mm and ask them to benefit 
from this Islam. Of course, without compulsion. Mm. We see all the time the true Muslims have always been living since the Prophet's time with non-Muslim in a harmony. Okay. And providing them their rights. For example, providing them the worship place. The Christians will have a place to worship without being interfered. The mm. Jews as well. The non-Muslim, the pagans. However, they will be constantly be reminded about Islam and asked politely, nicely, with, wisely to consider Islam the true religion and consider worshipping only one God who is the creator and sustainer of the universe. Mm. By this, they are still being given their rights. Mm. So the actual aspiration is for them to benefit what the Muslim benefit. And this is the best life you can have. However, if they choose not to do that, still they will have the rights without being restricted and without compulsion. They will be reminded about Islam continuously. And so the aspiration is to have a harmonized life, a constant reminder. However, if they choose not to follow, there's no compulsion in that. So okay. it's, it's actually overall a sociable society, living in harmony, and very peaceful. Now, if I, if, I, if I go back and think about the brotherhood in, in Islam, if, let's say, for example, I go to any part of the world and, and uh, visit a, a Muslim community, surprisingly that they will welcome me, they would be hospitable with me, they would treat me as a part of the family. And uh, this is one of the uh, benefits of this uh, brotherhood. Absolutely. And I think if, if we all can live in harmony and uh, enjoy the... The, the fruits of this brotherhood, then that will be good. Don't Indeed. you think so? Sure. Imagine that is extended to non-Muslims as well, but mm. uh, with a reminder that uh, this is a true path. So the whole world should be in peace then. Yes. And that's the aspiration of this. Now in conclusion, let us deviate a bit and talk about misconceptions that non-Muslims have against the concept of brotherhood in Islam. Yes. There are a lot of accusations. Mm. Some non-Muslims, or many of them, they accuse Muslims by saying that non-Muslims are enemies, which is not true. You cannot read in Islam that purely by not accepting Islam you become an enemy. No. Mm. Only when you become an enemy in a true sense, attacking Islam or attacking a Muslim, then you are an enemy. So it's but not mentioned in any, um, in, the, in the Holy Scripture of, uh, in, in Islam or any other teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that uh, uh, non-Muslims are enemies? No, I mean, in the true sense, if somebody is not a Muslim, mm. but he's not aware about Islam, mm. in fact, he may not even be punished. Okay. Because God says in Surah Al-Isra, A'udhu Billahi Minash Rajim, Wa ma kunna mu'adhibina hatta nab'ath rasoola. We have not been uh, punishing until we send a messenger to that society or to that person, to that mm. area. So a person, if he is not aware totally, will not be dealt I mean, harshly by God. God is very justice, the most justice. So a Muslim cannot consider mm. a non-Muslim per se just because a non-Muslim is an enemy. Okay. It's not right. In fact, you should go and call him and explain to him. Only when he starts attacking you by calling him towards Islam, then he becomes an enemy. He chose himself to become an enemy, but he was not considered an enemy before that. So enmity actually comes from the person himself mm. to his, against Islam. But as long as he is quiet, listening, trying to understand, arguing, asking, he is more than welcome and he is a friend in society. In fact, he is a brother in, in humanity. Mm. In brother in humanity, like we read in the Quran, وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ إِذْ قَالَ أَخُوهُمْ صَالِحًا أَخُوهُمْ صَالِحًا When Allah talks about this, uh, the community of Thamud, which was uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a community in which... One, uh, not believers. Unbelievers, mm. whom uh, Prophet Salih sent to them. Mm. Then here the, the verses say, they are, his, his, they are brother Salih. Mm. Although they are not believers, mm. there's a brotherhood in humanity. Okay. So we consider everybody brother or sister uh, in humanity, even if he or she is not a Muslim. As long as we are, there's no enmity between us, they, they choose not to, to, to take Islam, mm. but they listen mm -hmm. and they argue or they consider uh, and they have a different opinion. We discuss. We are still brother in humanities. Okay. So uh, there's no. There should, this is a misconception which some people say non-Muslim is an enemy. So it's not true. Mm. The other misconception is there's no love to non-Muslim, which is not true. Mm. We've shown and demonstrated so much love mm. from Islam to non-Muslim. So it's a misconception. Uh, and then some have said there's no care, there's no respect. 
say no islam cares and respects everybody mm. as long as that person or uh, is cooperating even without becoming a muslim yeah? so so what what happens if muslims uh, act uh, opposing this and uh, do not respect non muslims or do not care who love non muslims what would be, that's, that's considered not part of islam mm. it's their own choice mm. which is not linked to islam so they wouldn't be representing islam they will not be representing islam they were mm. chosen out of their way i mean outside the true path mm. they chose to get to go in a wrong direction and do that unfortunately that could be referred to islam but it should not be okay it should not be it's a the concept of a car and a driver okay the car is an uh, is, is a perfect machine can take you from point 1 to point b mm. but if the driver chooses to drive it over the river it is a driver who made a mistake not the car okay so islam stays i mean uh, innocent but uh, those people who chose to not to behave as muslim they pollute the the, the 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 name of islam uh we are asked not to argue with the people of the book mm. in, except in a nice way okay yeah so do not be rude and do, do not, not try rude, and yes. impose well, your 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 way of thinking well, on others uh, mm. god allah says wala tujadilu ahlul kitab illa billati hiya ahsan mm. do not argue with the people of the book who are christians and jews unless and except for the nice way in a nice way mm. even the argument should be nicely constructive constructively in a very nice humble way mm. explain your truth and listen to them no more than that or not worse than that if they chose not to to accept you should not be harsh okay are there any other misconceptions that uh, you you would like to yes. elaborate yes we should be forgiving and patient from others misconducts mm. so this also shows islam is actually more tolerating and more kind than what the the, the non muslim today label islam as they call it islam as a uh, terrorist mm. they are, in fact is the contrary we are more forgiving and tolerant we're supposed to be that way but if you attacked you defend mm. so defense of course is permissible otherwise you destroy people without rights mm. which nobody no religion or no, no no human being can accept such a thing mm. as a result we can defend ourselves but we should never attack and those who come to attack us will stop them from attacking as much as we can by defending yeah however the message of islam should be spread and those who will come and stop the message they are also attacking in the same way because the message which is spread is a peaceful message we are welcoming everybody to come and try to and, and people to have the right uh, to know yes they have to right to know if you don't want to let others listen mm. and analyze give them freedom to check and choose if they also the choice as well they have the choice there's no compulsion in islam mm. but stopping them mm. that's where enmity comes mm. you have chosen to attack mm. something good from not uh, spreading it across okay. and that's where it's considered that islam has been attacked and when it is retaliating or removing this barrier people call it a terrorist religion which is in reality should be called a merciful okay in terms of uh, brotherhood um how can uh, muslims okay sustain this brotherhood what what should they do to maintain this brotherhood i mean in the next generations would this brotherhood still exist exactly or? very mm. nice because god left us with two fundamental references mm. the quran and the teaching of the prophet peace be upon him mm. now by attaching ourselves strongly abiding with the quran mm. we will be forced to remain brothers and sisters okay and also the traditions of the prophet which explain the quran there's nothing new in the tradition except ex elaboration of the quran they both of these are in harmony and uh, conforming each other so by following the quran and the teaching of the prophet we am, we must be uh, bonded together as a brotherhood in this fraternity of islam so to maintain this brotherhood and to improve it and to enhance it to spread it around mm. even to non muslims we should attach ourselves with the quran and the teaching of the prophet i'm actually welcoming everybody to find the quran, to read the quran and prove for himself herself or himself that the goodness out of the quran there so it's only unfortunate that people by default they they, they want to reject the quran mm. but if they attempt to read and analyze i'm sure they love it I'm now sure. sheikh uh, one last point uh, before we wrap up uh, what about our kids how can we put in them this uh, concept how can we build their character 
to be uh, good citizens good muslims we and we have uh, an obligation that's a very mm. good point we have an obligation to teach our children the quran and the tradition of the prophet mm. all the good uh, part of islam of islam, islam all of it is good mm. so we have to teach our children our families constantly this okay. is our obligation by doing that they will also understand realize and benefit from this and the generation will continue okay to be a nice one Sheikh Said thank you so much for being here with us today and we benefited a lot from today's session i hope our listeners enjoyed as well and uh, please tune in tomorrow inshallah same time and as i'm your host Hatim Al Absalam thank you so much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh